praise the Lord. Dear friends, welcome to the program Catholic Faith Challenged. Today we deal with a very important theme as the Mother of God. The very concept Mother of God is supposed to be blasphemy. Can God have a mother? It doesn't mean God the mother. It is said Mother of God. If God has a mother, then who is that mother? Is she also God? Was she existing before God? And if God is born of a woman, then how can he be God? So, this leads to some absurd conclusions. How is it possible? And now we have to answer this question. What do we mean by calling Mary mother of God? And also say, how did the church come to this understanding or come to this term as mother of God? It's not a confession, an exclamation of some religious fanatic, neither a vision of a pious believer. This is a result of long discussions and meditations, reflections in the light of the Holy Spirit about the person of Jesus. Who is Jesus? That is the question. Is he man or is he God? We have seen this question. But now, the problem was, is Jesus a man, the humanity of Jesus? And if he is, how is it connected with the divinity? There had been many answers given. Some said, for example, Jesus, the humanity of Jesus was only appearance, docetism you call it. Or, Jesus, the man, was adopted. When he came to be baptized in Jordan, the Holy Spirit came upon him as a dove and the father adopted him telling, you are my son. And this adoption lasted only until his death. Before Jesus died, the Holy Spirit went away and the man Jesus died. So this was a adoptionism. And many other theories have been um, Proposed, but the Catholic Church could not accept any. And one of the most important uh, affirmations made was by Nestorius. Nestorius is a constant of the patriarch. He, in order to, uh, to explain the, uh, the relation between divinity and humanity of Jesus, he said, Jesus is man and God. A divine person and a human person. And now, God cannot be born or God cannot die. So it is the man Jesus who was born and who died. The person of Jesus, the human person was born of Mary and he died. So Mary should be called not mother of God, but mother of Christ. The Christotokos. Tokos means mother in Greek. So the council, and they had to in, uh, convene an ecumenical council. The third ecumenical council was held at Ephesus in 431 and the council fathers compelled Nestorius to confess that Mary is the mother of God, Theotokos. And he said, no, it is impossible, it is confusing, it is an error. You can say Christotokos, the mother of Christ or mother of the Messiah, mother of God incarnate. No, the fathers insisted that he should be, she should be called Theotokos and Nestorius refused and he was contempt. And there start the heresy of Nestorianism. Now, why did the fathers insist so much? What is the wrong with the understanding of Nestorius? The understanding comes with the Greek understanding of a person and nature. The fathers said the action of a person is a, from the person. The person is responsible for whatever one is doing. There, in fact, Jesus has two natures, the human nature and the divine nature. As concerning the Trinity, the God has one nature but three persons. The divine nature but those three persons, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In Jesus, on the other way, he is one person but two natures. And the unity of the person is responsible for the, the redemption of humanity. Suppose there were two persons, a human person and a divine person, and it's only the human person who, suffer, who is born and suffers and dies, then the, resurrect, the redemption of humanity still remains invalid. It is not possible. 
It is because God has taken upon himself humanity and the sin of the world and, and redeemed the humanity by shedding his blood as a sacrificial lamb. Hence it is said, you have to accept that Mary as the mother of God. And that's what we believe. That's why we call Mary mother of God. Mary is not the mother of God the Father. Mary is not the mother of the Holy Trinity. Mary is not the mother of the Holy Spirit. Mary is the mother of only Jesus Christ, the second person. But the fact remains there is only one person. There is no human person and a divine person. There is only one person that is the divine person, the second person of the Holy Trinity that took upon himself the human nature and is born of the Virgin Mary and died on the cross and rose from the dead. And so this is the basis for calling Mary mother of God. Might find illogical or difficult to understand. Of course, the whole faith of Catholicism of Christianity is difficult to understand with our intelligence and logic because God is beyond our understanding. God is beyond our logic, not against but beyond. Who can comprehend the eternal, the immense? As the Hindus would say, Nethi, Nethi, not this and not that. We come to some kind of understanding by revelation, but we don't claim to be in the full knowledge understanding of the divine Godhead. So here what we get from the Bible and what we get from the teaching of the Catholic Church guided by the Holy Spirit is this Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, who took upon himself the human nature, who became man. Sarks againeto, John tells. He became flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So the word became flesh through the Virgin Mary. And so Mary is the mother of the incarnate word who is God. And so we call her mother of God. So no misunderstanding that God, Mary is not the mother of the Holy Trinity. Mary is a human being who was born like any other human being. But she was given this special grace of becoming the mother of the second person of God. And that's why we call her Mother of God. Mother of God, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.